Oh, bringing the whole school up. One, one, one. Back through the middle and you're fishing. Let's have a go. Have a go there! What's going on guys? Welcome to another Sammy Itsky fishing adventure. You're joining me on a pretty rough and tumble day today. We're out off uh, the Gold Coast. I'm currently on the Marlin Bait Grounds. Now obviously, a couple of plans of attack today. One would be to catch a marlin, uh, whether it be live baiting or having a trial a bit later on. But the second plan of attack is to jig a heap of bait and restock the bait supply for this year. Usually around this time of the year, big schools of slimy mackerel, pilchards, all sorts of things stack up on these grounds out in 80 meters. So I never like to uh, waste an opportunity to put some bait in the freezer for the year ahead. We could find some pilchards, awesome. But there's plenty of slimy mackerel here so far. Gonna chuck a few in the live well. It won't be too long before I send my first livey down. Things cross, cross, there'll be a few pelagics around to uh, get some big reels screaming for the day. Oh, there's a big yakka. Big yakka and a lost me sinker. Cheeky. Now, unfortunately, the weather isn't meant to get too much better than this today. In fact, I think it's probably going to get a little bit worse. So we're going to have a bit of rocking and rolling, as you can probably see by the camera there. But it's not that bad. Worse comes worse. I can always just put the lures out and have a trial. Trolling's a bit more comfortable in the rough stuff. But for the moment, back to the job at hand. New sinker, then straight back down there. Oh, got him. Got him. Oh, they're pilchards. They're pilchards. Holy dooly. Guys, it doesn't get too much better than that on the bait front. Oh, there's slimies and pilchards, a mixture. Ladies and gentlemen, is a pilchard. These guys here, unreal bait for everything that swims, and it's awesome to be able to catch them yourself. Straight into some ice. They don't stay live very well at all, so no point keeping them in the live well. I'd just like to load up on pilchards, to be honest. This. Ooh. Oh, the boat's going to be a mess. But, oh no, another pilcher. To, the rest are small slimies. Pilcher. You can go in the ice slurry. Slime dogs. Small slimy, you can go straight this way. Oh, there's a little bonito or a mac tuna. Little mac tuna, have a go at that for a little mackerel toe bait. Unreal. Righto. Rig these baits up. Need a circle hook. Some rigging Dacron. Need a nice size one. 
juicer and a bait needle and you go just in front of their eye there pull the needle through make the back run out loop together wind 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 back through the middle and you're fishing then we want to free spool that down to depth which in this case is about 40 meters although we are just coming off the bait that'd be right well we've got a live out now just put a new bait jig on the last one got bopped by something Usually that's uh, potentially a marlin or, or any number of things that eats live baits. Just come along, see a whole string of them, go, that'll do, that'll do. I haven't actually seen any marlin on the sounder yet or anything big and pelagic, so not sure. Keep plodding along. A couple of big game boats are turning up, so that's always a good sign. Makes you feel a little bit better about being in the right area. But yeah, anything can happen now. Just play the waiting game. Have a go at this for in the zone. Oh, bringing the whole school up. Even got one on the lure. Well, guys, it's about 10 a.m. now. Zero fish on the board, apart from the bait. Uh, there's stacks and stacks of uh, life in that area, but just seemed to be no predatory fish. So I've got the lures out now. I'm just about to get up to cruising speed and going to go for a, a bit of a look and see what we can find. See if we can find a bit of action somewhere I'll probably keep coming back and do passes over this bait just because it is here that should be attracting all the predators but for the moment they just don't seem to be around a few other boats cruising around so who knows we might all be struggling but um yeah I've got to spread a two skirts and one diver out just with this bait around there may be a wahoo cruising so I've got a diver out as well We'll see. I'll change it to a skirt if it uh, becomes too much of an issue, but for now, gonna cover some K's and see what we can find. It's a shame I thought we were gonna get on there with all that bait, but that's marlin fishing. So uh, certainly not any karma out here now either. Not karma at all. So after missing those three hits in a row, I decided trolling life probably wasn't going to be for me. So I pulled up on a patch of bait that had a big arch sitting on it. I wonder what that would be. And I rigged up a slimy mackerel and sent it straight down. Well guys, there we go. We got a marlin on. We got a marlin on. Oh, it's a jumper. Sorry, I know there's gonna be stuff all over the lens. But we got one on. It's uh, just for reference, it's now 12.43. Just gonna put this in the holder, clean all the lenses, and we're gonna go after this guy. Looks to be a pretty nice fish. 
I haven't even got a gimbal on. Just been lazy. But we got one on, that's the main thing. He's up the top. He's a cranky one. Let's have a go. Let's have a go, shall we? We're having a go. Take that off. So, so far today, I've live baited, I've trolled, I've live baited again, I've trolled. This is me third time live baiting. And I literally put it down, was dropping it to the bottom, and I must have dropped it literally down. I've said literally too many times. Must have dropped it down this guy's throat. Because it just went from normal drop rate to a bit faster, it's a bit faster, a bit faster. And I was like, hang on a minute. I think this is down the hatch. And alas, here we are. First positive black marlin hookup of the year. Now, I know I mentioned it in a recent video. My goal this year is to catch a striped marlin, which I've done, a black marlin, which I'm fingers crossed about to do, a sailfish and a blue marlin all by myself out of my own boat. So having my first confirmed black marlin hookup, it's pretty exciting. We're a long way from landing this guy though. He, uh, yeah. He didn't look like the smallest marlin I've ever seen. I'm not sure how much of the head camera you guys got, but textbook live bait hookup. Accelerated, free spooled, came up tight, then he came to the surface. He didn't actually jump straight away, he came and surfed along the waves. I saw him, I was like, oh my god, I think I hooked a dolphin for a bit there because I could see the big dark shape. And, uh, well, then he did a little bill swipe and, and then there was no denying it. What I might do is swap sides here. Fur fighting off this other side. No rods or anything in the way. He seems to have stayed up relatively high. If you were um, in a game fishing comp, this would be the one that you want. Stays up high. You can go get the tag into it. Quick, smart, and in a hurry. There he is. Oh. Look at that. Now, the last thing we want is for him to join us in the boat. He's got plenty of fight left. That was a sick jump. Oh, if you had a drone, that'd look so cool. He's just staying up high. I'll tell you what, it is really nice to be, to be on. When the weather's tough like this, you cop an extra beating, it's always nice to come away with a win. I've been wet. That many times I've had waves over the back. But all sorts, the full nine yards. That's all right. It's kind of making me a bit nervous. This guy hasn't really played up yet. For his size, he should be um, going a bit more crazy. Obviously doing this solo, you want him Fairly tired by the time you get him to the boat. I've been able to see this guy for pretty much the whole fight. He's just cruising along the surface. Well, there's the double and the wind on. 
I still don't think he's done yet. He's just cruising. He's really hard to make angry. He's just kind of doing his thing. Which is concerning because they can do their thing for a while when they want to. He doesn't like the boat. Every time I get alongside of him, he heads off. For those watching along at home, we're just about to tick over half an hour. I'm pretty confident this won't go for three hours. But uh, I'm just glad I did all that training on a striped marlin, not even singing. This rod is a lot nicer to fish with as well. Yeah, how cool is that? Go again. make it a little bit more difficult to land him but Eww! he's upset yeah that's cool how cool am I on? Well, we're up to 50 minutes, guys. Looks like we're in for another long one, but... Well, no but. To cap it off, you know how I was going on about him going on the surface and how crazy that was? Well, he's not on the surface anymore. He's down deep. Just slugging away at 40 meters. I shouldn't have said anything, I've jinxed it. The fun of solo. If you were in a game boat, I keep on saying it, you would have had a tag in him so quickly. He just sat on there at the top there, waiting. Waiting to get tagged. One hour. One hour we've been going. Sitting down at 40 meters still. Oh, he's coming up. There he is. He's back on the surface. Phew! Every time he does that, takes a lot of energy. Guess what I bought this time? A bill grabbing glove. It's nice to be prepared sometimes.
dancing now. It's going crazy. I don't know how he's got this energy. It's a bit concerning. Hopefully it's a bit of a last ditch effort. Getting tired. Or not. After an hour and 18 minutes, my head camera just died. on the leader. Come on, mate. So guys, what just happened there is I had the leader in my hand, I had one leadering glove on and one sun glove and the line kept on slipping through my sun glove. So when he dived down again, I thought I'd let go of the leader, I'd get rid of my sun glove, put the second leadering glove on and I'd have him back up to the boat in no time and I could deal with him properly with two gloves on. Well guys, they can't all be fairy tale endings. The uh, main line parted. Notice it's abraded there and that's more than likely for me using those gloves to uh, try and give it a bit more hurt. And under extreme pressure, it's gonna start fraying it away and eventually create a weak spot. Technically that's classed as a capture I had the leader in my hand by game fishing terms. That's a capture. Oh, I don't know how long I fought it for. I think it's well and truly over three hours, probably getting towards four. I'm absolutely buggered. Still would have liked to have grabbed him on the bill and just held him there, but 
I just couldn't move him. Had one chance getting him to the boat and he was still going strong, fighting against me on the leader. And after that, I just couldn't get him up. Kept on turning the drag up more and more and more. And I was just running out of steam in the old arms. Oh. I can't just hook the small ones, can I? I'd love just a 25 or a 15 kilo black. That would have been perfect. That guy there was not a 40 to 50 kilo one. I'm gonna have to go back through the footage and look at it on head cam when I was holding onto the leader. He was, had to be a big fish. He just didn't stop. All muscle, just did not stop. I don't know, I don't know whether I feel happy or sad. I didn't get to grab onto him, but I got to touch the leader, so capture or not. I'm also a bit disappointed I didn't manage to get the hook out of that guy. He's gonna have a section of line and a, uh, a leader attached to him now, which, you know, no one wants. Really would have liked to have got that hook out and finished the process. I tried as hard as I could. I really, really did. Oh, I've got nothing left in the tank. Absolutely not. I don't even know if I want to put the lures back in on the drive home. I kind of want to get something to eat, but I'm scared I'll hook another marlin. That was insane. It just didn't stop. It just did not stop. Why did it stop? Don't know. Don't know. Well, I couldn't help myself. Put the lures in. Fingers crossed we find a dolphin fish. We hook another mile and we're in big trouble. Big trouble. But that's all part of the fun, isn't it? All part of the fun. Well, guys, we didn't hook anything on the troll. And um, look, I'm pretty thankful for that. I'm buggered. I'm buggered. Which means we also bought no tucker home. But while I was driving back, I had a bit of an idea. I've still got a live well full of uh, slimy mackerel. And I've seen them eaten all around the world. And um, look, I'm going to give them a crack. So these ones are still alive. I'm going to brain spike and bleed them. Do them all nice and prim and proper. Get them on the ice. And I reckon we're going to have an eat the bait cook up. Um, it's never a good time when you have to resort to that. But see how we go. Well, guys, I tell you what, a bit of a different filleting segment today. Um, yep, this is what happens when you don't catch anything for the table. You've got to eat the bait, so here we go. But before we do that, what we do have to decide in the comments below is whether we're classing that marlin as a capture or not. By game fishing rules, apparently you touch the leader, it's classed as a capture, but for this catch one marlin of every species, or not every species, one marlin, well guys, I didn't realise my microphone went dead, but what I was saying is that for this challenge I've set myself to catch a black marlin, blue marlin, striped marlin and a sailfish all in the same year solo from my own boat, I do need you guys to let me know whether that black marlin will be classed as a capture or not. The majority will rule, so let me know if you think it's a capture or not. If it wasn't, then that's all good. I'll go out and catch another one. If it was, all good. We can move on to the next one. Now, in the meantime, what I'm going to do with this slimy mackerel is I'm going to butterfly it, take all the bones out so that I can just chuck it on the fry pan with a bit of salt, bit of oil, and that's it. No recipe, no nothing. Let's let the fish do all the talking and see how it goes. Can't be too bad. They eat them everywhere else, so why not here? Well, that should make for a pretty cool little time lapse. But what we've got is that guy there, prepped, ready to rock and roll, butterfly it out. So what we're gonna do, is we're just gonna pat the skin dry, get out of it. Some sea salt flakes. 
I've got a pan getting very hot here. Bit of oil on there. Let's chuck it on. Into the pan, skin side down. Whoop. Turn that down a touch. I'm gonna let that cook majority of the way, skin side down, get it nice and crisp. And um, for that last little bit, I'll flip it over. Okay, time for a flip. Hey, doesn't look half bad. Doesn't look half bad at all. Yum. Righto, there you have it. Crispy skin, slimy mackerel. Flip it over, show you the other side. Looks quite good, doesn't it? Doesn't look too bad at all. Well, it's, well, it's, no, let's have it. I don't know what way to have it. I want the crispy skin side up. Let's do that. Looks cooler. Okay, now I'm gonna add a dollop of homemade tartare, a recipe which I will share with you at some stage, not right now, it's too secretive. Little dollop there. And voila. I reckon if you flame grilled one of these or did it over like char grilled so there's some grill marks on it, chucked it over a pasta dish or something like that, I reckon you'd pay for that in a restaurant. Looks fantastic, look at it. Beautiful. For the moment of truth, keep in mind, you do want to avoid those fins up the top side there. There's going to be bones in that and um, I guess any that you missed as well. I'll get this back section here, will be safe. This is a two hand job. Righto, here it is. Eat the bait, slimy mackerel. Mm. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's got a, um, it's definitely got a flavour. It's like got a stronger flavour, like um, a bonito would. Um, kind of similar to a, to a, um, it's probably a different flavour to a tailor, but it's got that kind of same stronger flavour. Not a fishy, a oh, little bit, little bit fishy flavour, but not anything um, obnoxious. I think with the bit of tartare or you know a bit of marinade, a bit of some sort of um, accompanying sauce, that'd be unreal. I could also. See you using a bit of this as, um, yeah, even on a pizza, like a sardine sort of thing, with a bit of tartare. That's bloody good. That's not bad at all. Well, there you go, guys. It just goes to show you can eat just about anything. That's a slimy mackerel. We'll have to give a yakka a go and a pike and all those sorts of things as well, but nothing wrong with that at all. I could, um, I reckon you could really hero that on a dish if you stop dropping it off the fork. That's good. I'm happy. That on a pasta dish would be unreal. Anyway, guys, I'm going to clean the rest of this up. I'll do a quick tackle talk, then you guys can get on with the rest of your weekend. Cheers. Right, guys, tackle talk time, and the rig is a fairly standard Marlin live baiting rig. That is a 8 mustard light gauge demon hook circle. So it rolls into the corner of our mouth. I've got that done in a snell pattern with the line going through the eye like so. And that helps the circle to really engage in the corner of the mouth and stops them getting gut hooked. At the end of the day, we want to look after these fish. So the better our success rate in getting them in here rather than down here, the better it is for the fish and the fishery. So that guy there, mustard demon circle, that's them. They're absolutely perfect for this style of fishing. That's an 8 um, I don't think you need much bigger than that for the size of the bait we we're using. Perfect for the job. Now I run about 2 metres a litre. For this one I was using 120 pound. You can go down to 80 and 60 pound if you really want to. If you have to fish light to get the bite per se. But I don't really think they're that fussy. So 120 pound works a treat. Also gives you plenty of insurance if you do hook one of those big ones and end up fighting it for three and a half hours. Um, the leader never gave, gave way on me, it was just me summoning the, uh, the main line that, that wore through. So yeah, and I tie that to a figure eight loop. I'm sure there's a better way to do that. You could probably crimp it if you really wanted. I've never had a figure eight fail. You'll see it's a nice big loop like that because we actually put our sinker on this loop and then we attach our snap clip there. 
And that keeps your sinker in place, stops it running up the line, uh, and it also gives you about your two metre drop there to have your live bait swimming away from your sinker but still gets it down to depth. Now the rod and reel, there's nothing you haven't seen before. This is a Tyranos 12, 50 pound mono top shot. I've got an 80 pound wind on leader and 40 pound braid below it. The rod is a Wilson Venom Ocean Warrior 15 kilo stroker rod, much more appropriate for fighting marlin on. It's five foot six. Uh, you can really dish out some hurt. Um, that guy there, great little light tackle outfit. For that live baiting, absolutely perfect. Now I'll run that wind on leader down to 170 pound snap clip, and that's what I use to clip onto my trace. Guys, if you'd like to check out this gear or anything more from the Wilson range, you can do so on their website, wilsonfishing.com. They've got plenty of information there, so make sure you head over and check it out. Now, if you'd like to support my channel, you can do so by heading to my website, sammyhitskyfishing.com. Got heaps of merch available there, hats, shirts, stickers, D-hookers, all sorts of stuff. So head over there and see if there's anything that tickles your fancy. Guys, that is all we've got time for this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Looking forward to seeing whether we're classing it as a capture or not. If you haven't done so, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you haven't done so, hit that like button and subscribe to this channel because there's new fishing action coming every single week. Guys, hope you're all safe and well and hope you're getting out there for a fish yourself and I'll catch you next week for another Sammy Hitsky Fishing Adventure. Cheers.